Hello and welcome to Prime Coaching, it's Danny here and today I'm going to take you through six ways that you can challenge your PE class this year. Now, As I'm sure you're aware, no class is the same and it's really important that we adapt it to suit our class's ability levels. If you have your skills and challenges too hard, your students will lose confidence and too easy and they'll be unmotivated and distracted. So through these lesson adaptations, I'm gonna show you how you can create an engaging PE lesson. So the first thing we need to think about is the kind of equipment that we use. Now, of course, we wanna be using the right and appropriate equipment for our students in the skills that we do, but it's also great to have them practice with a variety of different shapes and sizes in order for them to get a good feel and it will help them across a few sports. So something to think about is the size of the bat or the racket that you use. Generally, a larger racket or paddle, it's gonna be easier for the students to hit and contact the ball, or a smaller or thinner or different shaped one it's got to be a lot harder and more challenging. Have a think about the size of the balls that you're using. Generally, larger balls are going to be easier to throw and catch, and smaller balls, such as a tennis ball, is going to be a lot more challenging. You can also think about the shape or type of the ball that you're using. So you might be using an oval or American football shaped ball, or maybe a ball that has a funny texture on it that makes it harder to catch, or maybe you've got a really bouncy ball that's easy to bounce or even a spongy ball. So there's different textures that you can use. The second thing to think about is the space that you're using. Now of course you can use sports court lines or you can also use cones or markers to mark out your playing area. Now if students are in pairs, you get them closer together, it's generally going to be easier when they're practicing skills. Further apart and it's going to be a lot harder. If you're playing a game, then making the area smaller is gonna be a lot more challenging as students will have less space to move around and making that area larger, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to move and pass the ball. You can also change the distance to the targets. So of course, closer to those targets to hit, it's gonna be generally easier. Further away from those targets, it's gonna to be tougher for the students to hit. The third thing to think about is movement. Now there's some activities or warm-up games or drills where you can specify how the students have to move around the playing area. So maybe instead of just running, they have to skip, or maybe they have to hop using just one foot, or maybe they can only gallop around the area or even sidestep around the area. So there's different ways that you can specify, particularly in warm-up games, the way that your students move around. The fourth principle is scoring. And using points is a great way to get the students competitive and motivated in the skills that you're doing. So if they're doing a skill or a drill where they have to hit the target, by increasing the amount of the targets that you have, it's of course gonna give them more chances to get points. So you can give them more chances to get points and you can also take targets away, make it more challenging and there's a less chance of them to hit a target. Of course, you can also change the size of that target. Smaller targets, of course, being more difficult and larger targets, a lot more easier. Another thing I like to do is to give more chances to earn points. So maybe students might miss the targets, but you can give them the challenge. Perhaps they have to get it in, in a particular zone near that area or give them challenges such as throwing off of one foot or balancing on one leg while they do their skill and they can double their points or triple their points. The thing I like to also add in is the option where they can lose points. So if they accidentally hit a red cone or a danger zone, then they lose points. So maybe they lose five points or 10 points. However you wanna set that up, it's gonna make that drill really more exciting and engaging. The fifth principle to think about is the actions that are used. Now you can specify the way that students have to perform a particular skill. So maybe if they're doing overarm throwing, you specify that you have to do it with your left hand only, or maybe just your right hand. 
or if you're practicing drop kicks in soccer or American football using only your left leg or only your right leg. So you can specify in particular ways that students are allowed to throw and hit and strike or bounce using just particular hands or legs. And you can also specify using two hands to throw and catch the ball or maybe using just one hand. The last principle to think about is grouping. Now this is really important to keep your students engaged by having them work with different members of the class. So if they're working in pairs in a specific activity, make sure you switch up the pairs every few minutes and you can have students working with others who are maybe more advanced than them or not as skillful as them and they can actually help to coach each other. Or maybe you can just have the students practice individually on their own, give them the time to work through those skills. And of course, if they're in teams, you can make the teams larger and smaller. Make sure you mix up the teams often so everyone gets a fair go working with lots of different people around the class. Hopefully you've managed to pick up some tips which you'll be able to implement into your PE lessons this year. If you're struggling for ideas or just need some more inspiration for your PE, make sure you check out my online store. There you'll have access from kindergarten to grade eight complete lesson plans, sports specific units, gymnastics, fitness circuits, individual stations, pair stations, and loads more so you'll have everything you need to teach PE to your class. So whether you've never played sport before, or you're a sport enthusiast, or you don't know where to start, make sure you check them out now.